Welcome to this Morphit presentation. Uh, my name is Ted Hawkins and I'm from the Edge Software Consultancy. Today I'm going to demonstrate how we can use Morphit to run a radial ligand binding assay uh, and with two key purposes. The first is to show why Morphit is so suitable for this type of assay and the second is to show three of the release plugins, uh, three of the release add-ins actually working together in one binder. Morphit and all the add-ins are available for a 30-day free trial from our website. We'll be running the experiment from the point of view of the bench scientist rather than as a, as a technical exercise. Um, if you want to see more de detail around plugins, there's, there's a related screencast available. So the procedure is pretty straightforward. Um, we, the scientist would set up the protocol, so choosing the receptor and the starting conditions, the dilution factors and so on for the experiment. We then bring in the list of compounds that we want to test. And from there we can generate uh, the plate mapping file. We then bring in the plate reader files and bring all this data together, uh, normalize the data and reduce this and generate curve fits. The add-ins that we're using here are uh, the structures for Morphit uh, add-in that renders um, smiles and mole file data. Uh, the fitting for Morphit plugin and this uses um, the data in the Morphit sheets uh, to apply nonlinear regression and that can be combined with the, the charting functionality. And SDI for Morphit which was used to import the reader files. So we've opened Morphit and the first thing to do is to create a new binder from a template, the Radiolegant binding template. Okay, so the template is opened. We see the usual collection of pages within the workbooks. And we've opened with the instructions panel showing, telling us how to run the experiment. So the first step is to define the experimental protocol. Put my details in. And in this case, the receptors have been tied to a set of constants for log KD and log hot, and these are used to calculate the, calculate the KI. The one change I want to make is to reduce the starting concentration of the standard, but we'll keep the dilution factor. Okay, so that's done. The second step is to import our list of compounds. Now, we could create a number of rows within this table and then paste in our compounds from things like Excel. But in this case, I've got the uh, the compound list in a data file, in a text file. So let's have a quick look at this. So you can see in this case we've got a compound number, the compound name and its batch. And we've also got some uh, smiles information, so we can bring in the structural information with the data. So I'll run the, uh, the standard data import routine. I'm going to accept all these columns, finish. And the last step is to match up the fields in the table with the, with the columns in the data file. So we can see the uh, the information has been read in, the number, the compound, the batch, and smiles, and this has been transformed into a structures. And from the structure, we've extracted the formula, the mass, and calculated a new label based on the compound and batch. Now, according to the conditions, each one of these compounds is run at a single replicate and over a 10-point dose response. So this is all calculated out to generate uh, a seed file for the, for the plate instrumentation. The assay is going to be run. The next step is to select the, the uh, generated reader files. <clears throat> so 
So the data is read in and because we have a plate format associated with this binder we can automatically calculate the mean of the controls for the plate and their standard deviation and the Z primes and this gives us an overview of the quality of the run. The tram lines in the middle of the graph are calculated from um, the acceptable positive control and we can see here in second plate we have a bit of a problem. So what we can do about that is we can actually look at the reader data and the reader data has actually been pivoted by um, um, the column to provide a matrix view of this and we can see instantly that there's an outlier. So what we'll do is we'll knock this data point out of the analysis. Obviously it can be knocked back in again. And if you look at the plate QC now we'll see that the um, the, the second plate is now providing a more acceptable um, solution. Now again this type of thing can be automated but we've tried to keep things simple in this case. So I've done the plate QC. Uh, the standard curves for each plate have been calculated so we can look at these and we can see in here that the concentration range is running from minus uh, 7 to uh, minus 11 and a half uh, uh, log and there's the curve and we can interact with this curve knock out data points and so on and if necessary we could go into the the fits and we could lock the parameters uh, uh, we could even change the type of curve and we can do that for individual cells as well So the next stage is to look at the analysis for the for the compounds. We can see each of the compound labels been brought through, as has the structural information and the curve as well. And again, we can interact with the curve fits, knock out data points, and we see the knocked out data point is also shown on the concentration innovation. From here, we can extract the PIC50, the PKI, and the R squared. The final stage of this particular um, assay is to publish results. Uh, what we've done is created a results table where we've brought all the data together, the experiment, the receptor, the compound. We've converted the, um, the values of IC15KI, uh, we've shown the R squared, and we can calculate a comment or simply write, uh, write a comment in, in this field. Now this has got a nice simple structure to it. You see for each experiment there's a whole collection of compounds with a set of properties. But usually what we need to do is extract this and export this into something much flatter. So we can do that in a simple click as export to CSV. Pop this on my desktop. And finally save the binder. So that's the end of the demonstration. Uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, please feel free to register and download this example and try it out for yourselves.